So I first found out about Berkeley primarily through studying the, the pathways that musicians I admired, people like Sierra Hall and Molly Tuttle, who were huge influences. Uh, it really emerged as, as a place for meeting new people, making connections in the industry, honing the craft, and, and learning a lot of skills that aren't taught at traditional music conservatories, which kind of made me want to come here specifically. I was incredibly nervous for my audition. Uh, for one, I didn't read music. For the audition, I played a medley of two Chris Thiele tunes. He's one of my favorite mandolinists. I chose that because it was something that showcased kind of what I had already done up to that point, instead of, I guess, trying to be what I thought they would want to hear out of a music school student. And the audition team made me feel really welcome. They let me improvise over a couple of jazz standards instead of the sight reading, so that was, that was really nice. My first year was kind of a whirlwind getting on my feet in terms of reading music and, and just kind of the basic knowledge and I thought Berkeley did a really good job kind of evening out the playing field early on. I'd already had a lot of theory training before Berkeley. Bumping up the skills I was a little lacking on was super helpful. My favorite class at Berkeley so far has been advanced reharmonization techniques taught by Professor Steve Roshinsky. It just opened up so many pathways for composing and just looking at chord progressions in a different way. One of my favorite projects at Berkeley that's been outside of the typical curriculum has been my work in the Roots Department, led by Matt Glazer, who allowed us to create a modern 21st century string band, brought in some incredible guest artists to work with us, and we were able to put on a few sets of music last year, including traveling to North Carolina to be part of the International Bluegrass Music Association's annual conference. It's been great to uh, be thrown in that professional environment with these uh, musicians who are out there touring, coming in to, to teach some master classes or, or give us feedback. You know, I don't feel like that's something people go out and are able to get very often from other musicians. Some of my favorite things to do to, to relax and recharge are go to the gym. I love exploring Boston and Cambridge, local restaurants, local venues, open mics and jam sessions. Also, the library has a lot of great resources besides just stuff for class, full-length concerts, archival footage from the BPC, a lot of great stuff like that. Some other resources around campus that I found are very helpful. Uh, we have the Music Technology Center where you're able to go in and use workstations that are equipped with almost any audio tool, video editing tool you might need. Things like the Student Success Center, uh, the Career Center, everything under the Berkeley Bridge has been really helpful from pursuing gig opportunities, internship opportunities, to forming successful study habits, getting advice on networking and professional development. We have a group, Liam Purcell and Kane Mill Road, and we've performed in about 45 states, 500 shows over the last seven years. After I graduate, we hope to go full time. I think if I could give myself any advice, it would be just to, to not rush anything. I was pretty self-conscious about the gaps in my knowledge coming here, but getting here and, and finding out that really everybody has those gaps just in different areas, and some of my best teachers at Berkeley have just been the people around me, the students, and being able to build upon each other's skills has been a really great thing, you know, and coming here with a very open mind is, is definitely the best thing you can do, and enjoying your time, being really open to whatever, whatever comes your way here at Berkeley.